Hello and welcome back to Global Gaming Initiative. This is part four of my ideas and technologies guide and this time I'll be going over military ideas. Um, here we go. There are six military ideas. Aristocratic, offensive, defensive, quality, quantity, and naval. I will go over what the individual bonuses are, when you want to take that idea set, and when you want to use them. This is a beginner's tutorial video, so uh, but hopefully more experienced players could learn something off of it too. Um, so let's get started. Aristocratic ideas. Uh, you start off with Noble Knights, which is cavalry cost reduction, cavalry combat in ability increase. Uh, it's good with any country that gets a cavalry bonus. And uh, thanks to one of Aristocratic ideas, uh, thanks to one of Aristocratic ideas policies, uh, this increases that from plus 10% to uh, plus 35%, which is a nice bonus, for sure. Hostile core creation cost on us, plus 50%. Increase income from vassals, plus 10%. Hostile core creation cost on us lowers the likelihood that a nation will declare war on you because they view you as not worthwhile because of the amount of cost that the AI would incur from attacking taking your land. Income from vassals is increased by 10%. That means that any vassals that you have, it's gonna, they're going to be paying you for more. National manpower modifier plus 25%. That means that your base manpower is increased by 25%. Pretty cut and dry. Nice bonus for sure. Army and Navy tradition decay. Best when you're at 100 prestige, or 100 tradition I mean. Um, means that it's going to be essentially equal to one yearly army tradition or one yearly navy tradition um, at 100 tradition. At zero, it's going to give no bonuses. So higher, better for that. Diplomats plus one, nice bonus all around. You get an extra diplomat that you can send to improve relations and stuff like that. Cost of reducing war exhaustion, nice bonus. I don't like it because it's not passive, however, it will save you diplo points in the long term if you need to use it. Military tech cost minus 10% is all around very nice. It allows you, if you're a technology tree that's not Western, to stay caught up with Western techs easier. Leaders without upkeep plus one. Amazing bonus. Allows you to have an additional leader for no military point cost per month giving you better chances to have better leaders all the time. I would take this, uh, I would never take this with innovative ideas. I would take one or the other because it's basically just all round bonuses for each. Um, I would say innovative ideas are better for Western Europeans and Central Europeans and aristocratic are better for Eastern European, the Ottomans, um, maybe some Muslims in this area. Basically, if you're not a Western tech, it's better to take that. And if you get a better cavalry bonuses, it's better to take that because it's more to keep you caught up and be a replacement for innovative ideas. I would take it first. I would take it probably third or fourth, depending. Offensive ideas. Offensive ideas, you're going to start off with land leader shock plus one. Great early game. I would recommend taking it first if you want to do a military idea first. Um, land leader shock plus one. Shock is better early game. Means that your land, your leader is going to have a better shock. You're going to get better shock rolls. It's going to help you in battle overall. Recruitment time minus 10%. That's going to decrease the amount of time it takes to recruit units. Not an amazing bonus, but I, I mean, it's okay. It's more of a filler. Land leader fire plus one is going to be better mid and late game when fire is actually more prevalent than shock. Um, so definitely a good bonus. Prestige from land battles plus 100% means that you can use Cassus Belly like Dust Volt and show superiority to a greater effect because if you're winning battles, you're going to be getting more prestige. Siege ability plus 20% is vital late game when sieges are going to take a long time, forts are a lot harder to siege down, and things are a lot tougher to acquire. 
Clan force limit modifier, plus 20%, is going to allow you to have more men on the field at any given point in time, meaning that you can field a larger army, and which is amazing as a bonus. Discipline plus 5% is going to be greater late game than it is early game, because discipline scales as the game goes on and morale becomes less important. Um, but an amazing bonus nonetheless, giving offensive ideas a great early game and a great late game, and a decent mid game making them a good idea to pick up first, because they're just going to carry you throughout the game. Cover army morale speed, not a big bonus. I think it's kind of probably the worst uh, last idea that you can get. Uh, offensive ideas I would consider taking on something like France or Castile. Uh, basically, if you basically, if you have a big neighbor who you're going to need to outperform, you're going to want to take that because it'll give you the edge you need at all stages of the game. Um, moving on from that, you got defensive ideas. Defensive ideas are complementary to offensive ideas, and that's because you get start off with plus one yearly army tradition, which means your general's going to be even better. Couple that with land leader shock, land leader fire, and later on land leader maneuver, and you're just going to have all round better generals. Uh, it means you're going to be recruiting two star generals if you're at war relatively often. You're going to be recruiting two-star generals just right off the bat, no problem, off of a peace time. Morale of armies plus 15% is better early on in the game, but it's good at all stages of the game. So you don't want to underestimate that. Man lead a maneuver plus one is a great bonus. Um, it means that you're going to be able to fight into more versatile terrain easier. Land maintenance modifier reduces the cost that you're going to incur for having a lot of troops. It's very complementary to land force limit modifier. Um, so another reason that these two are complementary. Fort defense and fort maintenance is complementary to uh, recruitment time because it gives you more time to recruit and it allows you to hold out for longer. Reinforcement speed increase, recover army morale speed. Very complementary, very nice bonus. Um, Land attrition, minus 25%. It's an okay bonus. It's better for something like Muscovy or uh, the Timurids or someone in that region where you have a low, uh, a low supply limit in your provinces naturally. It's going to allow you to have more units in those places at once. And if you are taking attrition, it's going to be minimized. I mean, if you're sieging down a fort, it's going to be minimized. If you're in a massive battle, it's going to be minimized. It's just it's a good bonus. Not amazing, but it's a good bonus. Attrition for enemies increase. That means if they're in your territory, as opposed to taking a 1% attrition, it's 2% attrition. Um, that's just a really good bonus. Because that means it's going to wear down their manpower twice as fast from attrition. Uh, assuming they're only taking one tradition in most of your territories. So it's, it's just an all-around nice bonus. I would say you want to take if you go offensive, you want to take defensive. If you go defensive, you want to take offensive at some point in the game. Uh, you can go defensive first. If you do, I would recommend you stop at land morale of armies and then go something like, you know, an administrative idea or something like that. Uh, and that's because there's no reason to really move on in that tree until you finish offensive ideas. Um, but if you do want like a military idea first, but you just want a little bit in the military ideas, you don't want a whole lot, you can definitely stop at morale of armies, uh, military drill bonus and defensive, and that's just a nice bonus. And know that you take offensive ideas later, and you're going to get increased bonuses because they complement each other very nicely. Quality ideas. Quality ideas are both good on land and sea, and provide amazing bonuses to your armies. Uh, it's a good pick up at any stage of the game. So starting off from the top, private to marshal, infantry combat ability increase plus 10%. That's going to allow your infantry to essentially have 10% more discipline. Uh, that's essentially what that translates to. Uh, yearly army tradition plus one is complementary to defensive ideas of yearly army tradition plus one, and which is an amazing bonus. Cavalry combat ability plus 10%. Complements aristocratic ideas com combat ability plus 10% uh, and cavalry cost reduction. It also complements land force limit modifier reduction 
and recruitment speed and reinforce speed. Uh, just an all around good bonus. Ship durability plus 5% means that your ships are going to be harder to take down. It's essentially discipline for ships and is a good bonus, just flat out. Morale of Navy is also an equally good bonus because it means that your ships are going to stay in the fight longer uh, before they give up and are sunk. Naval attrition reduction means that if you do need do begin incurring naval tradition or you need to get, like go around the world or have a lot of colonies, you can get your ships out there very quickly without problem. Um, you will incur very low attrition doing so. It's just an all-around good bonus. Copper bottoms, naval attrition, uh, I just went over that. Uh, mass battery, artillery combat ability plus 10% is essentially 10% discipline for artillery. That's actually a pretty good bonus because that means they're going to be doing a lot more damage from the back line and if they do get shoved into the front line then they take less damage and since artillery they're the most expensive to recruit and maintain that makes it a very nice ability all around. And you'll notice that because you get artillery combat ability, cavalry combat ability, and infantry combat ability you're essentially getting 10% discipline from quantity quality ideas in addition to another 5% discipline from their keystone giving you essentially uh, all around 15% discipline uh, from that one idea set, and which makes it a very nice pickup at any stage of the game, but the later the better. Quantity ideas is complementary to quality ideas the most, however it is also co complementary to both defensive and offensive as well. Uh, it's a nice pickup, it's best early game, it's probably the best early game I would say. And that's because if you start off National Manpower Modifier plus 50%. When your manpower is low, increasing it by 50% is a really nice bonus. When your manpower is high, increasing it by 50% less impactful, but still a nice bonus. Manpower recovery speed means that as your men are drained out, they recover, uh, you get new men each month at a faster rate. Just an, It's a good bonus. It's a very nice bonus. It means that you can fight for longer, harder. Regiment cost reduction means that it's going to be cheaper to uh, raise new regiments when they're destroyed. Land maintenance modifier reduces the cost overall of your troops, allowing you to maintain more troops on the battlefield at once. Available mercenary increase means that you can raise mercenaries. And keep in mind that land maintenance modifier works on mercenaries as well, allowing you to have more doing more all the time. Garrison size plus 25% requires the enemies to uh, siege out for longer. It's going to make it so that you can sally more men to the battlefield if you need a bonus to uh, take down a siege. And it means that it's going to be harder for enemies to assault your forts. Land attrition minus 10%. You're going to be taking less attrition. It's an okay bonus. Land force limit modifier plus 50% means essentially you're inflating your nation's military to a larger size than it normally would be able to have by a lot. Uh, that's with the uh, National Manpower modifier and the Land Force Limit modifier. Quantity ideas coupled with quality ideas makes gives you a very formidable, formidable fighting force that's hard to take down and will be able to stand up to a very tough beating. Um, just overall just a good bonus. I would take it first on any country like Muscovy. Uh, you could take it on a small country because it inflates your bonuses to military, uh, inflates your manpower. Um, I, you could take it on any nation. I wouldn't take it on England or an island nation, but it's probably the best first choice that you can make next to administrative. Moving on from that, naval ideas. These are the naval counterpart to maritime ideas and the military tree. Naval leader shock and naval leader fire. Nice bonuses because they're going to allow you to perform better in combat. Uh, akin to directly to land leader shock and land leader fire. Galley combat ability plus 25% is essentially dur ship durability increased by 25% on galleys. Prestige from naval battles plus 100% means that if you're in a large naval battle, or any naval battle for that matter, it's going to be giving you more prestige. 
Not a huge bonus considering the lack of naval combat that there is in the game, but definitely nice, especially when colonialism starts and you actually start getting into naval combat late in the game. It's an amazing bonus. Press Gang's Naval Maintenance Modifier, minus 10%. It's great when you have a lot of heavy ships, especially, because heavy ships cost the most to maintain. And by virtue, by virtue of that, it's going to be cheaper for them to maintain with minus 10%, making it more feasible to have a large fleet of heavy ships. And heavy ship combat ability just got done talking about it, but there you have it. 20% ship durability for heavy combat ship or heavy ships. And that means that your sh heavy ships are going to be fighting a lot harder, a lot stronger, a lot longer. Morale of Navy is plus 15%. Great early game bonus. Great any time of the game bonus. Means that your Navy isn't going to be outperformed by the enemy Navy. Especially once you've gotten this deep in the tree. And then ship durability plus 10%. There you go. The bonus of bonuses for as far as the Navy is concerned. Making naval ideas actually a really good pickup on anyone that is going to need a large navy. So Portugal, Castile, England, uh, France maybe, Sweden definitely, any Mediterranean power like the Ottomans, uh, thanks to the galley combat ability makes it okay. If you're going to be using anything from galleys to heavy ships, that is the bonus for you. Uh, that, that concludes my ideas and technologies tutorial video. Thank you for joining me, Global Gaming Initiative. Have a nice day.